Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Robinson again and we're going to this time review for the grade 7 New York State mathematics exam. So this is our first of a series that's going to help you prepare for the state test. So let's get started. First question at noon on Tuesday in Peekskill, the temperature in degrees Celsius was negative 4. At noon on Tuesday, the temperature was 6 degrees higher. What was the temperature at noon on Tuesday? So we have a pro problem that starts us off with a temperature of negative 4 degrees Celsius. So negative 4 degrees Celsius over here. And that's very cold. And then it went higher, so it went up by 6 degrees. But we can get our thermometer, start down here at negative 4, and count up 6 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4. That would get us to this point right here. If we went up 4 spaces from there, that would be 0. So we went up so far 4 spaces. And if we went up two more spaces, that would give us this point right up here, which would be two. So our answer would be letter A, two degrees Celsius. So let's check that. Yes, it is right. Now we can look at it in a different light, whereas we could take the numbers negative 4 and increase means it's going to add to it so if we add 6 degrees to it that would give us positive 2 because remember you cannot add negatives and positives I know you're tempted to say 10 or negative 10 but what I do is I take a little shortcut in adding my negatives and po positives what I do is I draw four negatives, two, three, four, and underneath it, six positives, two, three, four, five, six. Then I would cancel out, so let's go cancel out, one, two, three, four, those four negatives and four positives cancel out because opposite signs cancel out. And I'd be left with just these two negatives. I'm um, sorry, two positives. And that's how I get positive two as my answer. So that's a good way to look at it. So try to do that in case you have the rule mixed up. But the rules are same signs, you would add the numbers and keep the same sign. Different signs, you would subtract and choose the sign of the larger digit. So A was our correct answer. Here's our next question. Which expression is equivalent to 4x plus 3 minus 2x plus 5? Well, I got different choices here. So let's see. This is a algebraic expression, and it reminds me of a polynomial. So my polynomial would, would be very long here. So let's see if I can go over here and cut this up into pieces. In between each sign, I cut it up. I have a 4x, I have a plus 3, I have a negative 2x, and a plus 5. Well, I know my plus 3 and negative 5 are regular numbers. And we just talked a second ago about drawing three plus signs and 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative signs canceling out positives and negatives. Cancel that one out. 
and I'll be left with two negatives. Uh, uh, did I do that right? Nope, nope, I did that wrong. Let me fix that. So let's straighten that out. That should have been positive signs. So let's fix that real quick. So I have three positive signs and I have five more positive signs. There we go. So I have a lot of positive signs here and technically I'm supposed to keep them all on the same line. So let me put them all on the same line because I'm only supposed to have my negative signs on one line and my positive signs on the other line. So I got a lot of positives. So I have, if I count them up, I'd have a total of eight positives. So I'm looking at my answer choices. I have positive eight here, positive eight here, and positive eight there. So I know B has got to be wrong. Now the question is, what about these X's? I have four X's, and I have a negative 2x. Well, these are like terms because they have the same variable. So I have to subtract the coefficients. So 4 minus 2 would give me minus 2x. I'm sorry, positive 2x. 4 minus 2 is positive 2x. So I'd have 2x and a plus 8. So that would give me answer choice A. So I believe my choice is choice A. Yes, I got it right. So another way of looking at it would be to use your columns to deal with it. So let's clear this ink first. And let's look at columns. We have two columns here, and we have in one column x's, and the other column constants, which are numbers. So when we separated all of our terms, we put the numbers or constants in one term, and we combine. 3 plus 5 gave us plus 8. In the other column, we had an x column, and we put the 4x and the negative 2x in there, and that gave us a difference of 2x. So you can make columns out of it as well as drawing your signs. Here's our next question. What is 72% of 175? We have a multiple choice, so let's try to get our answers to make sense. So of means time. Now 72% is close to a hundred percent. A hundred percent would mean the whole number. So a hundred percent of 75, 175, that would be 175. So that's 72 percent is a little less, so I know my answer is going to be a little less than 175. So I'm looking at my choices and I'm going to compare which one's a little less than 175. Well, definitely not D. That's way over. C is pretty good. But let's look at the other choices. B, 12.6. That's a lot low. So I'm supposed to be just a little bit less. That's a little too low. And 1.26, that's very low. So I'm just going to use a little math sense and say my answer is C. And another way I could check it. Let me use my 50%. 50% means half. So if I took half of 175, I know I would have like, a, like um, uh, what's half of 175? Half of 100 is 50. Half of 75 is 32.5. So that's like 82.5. So I know 
A and B have got to be wrong because half of 70 of 175 is like 82.5 so somewhere around there if I did my math right so uh, I know these numbers are really really low so it, it's got to be C so I'm gonna pick C as my answer and this is without a calculator so I'm pretty good even if I did my math wrong here I know uh, it's got to be around 80 something so half of that is 100 half of that is 30 2.5 so so I know it's got to be more than 1.26 and 12.6 so 126 is a pretty good estimate so I use a little bit of estimation but the real way to do it would be to multiply 72 percent times 175 just to see what you would get that would be the real way to deal with it and when you do it you get 126 all right let's get to our next question if s equals 2.05 find the best estimate for 6 s squared okay we're going to estimate so estimate best estimate so that means we're going to round off this value so let's round it off to the to an easy number that we could use 2.05 would be close to 2 and now i have 6 s squared over here that means 6 times s squared and I know s we said was equal to 2 so I'll change that to 2 and I'm going to multiply by 6 s squared which was 2 squared do my orders of operation exponents first 2 times 2 is 4 6 times 4, 24. So I should get 24. So let's try B as our choice. Yes, we are right. So first thing you do when you're estimating, round off your value, then substitute inside the expression. We substitute for S because remember 6 S squared means 6 times S squared. We, we substituted the 2 because that's the new number we're using. I know you could use 2.05, but they said round it off and estimate. So 2 squared is 4 equals 24. So that was a good problem. Let's try one more. Scott and Thomas are playing a game with, the num with number cards. At the end of the game, Thomas still has five cards if the value of each card is negative 50, how many points does Thomas have? Okay. Well, each one of these cards at the end of the game is worth negative 50. So I have negative 50 for this card, this card, this card, this card, and that card. So I have a negative 50 five times. So if I multiply negative 50 times 5, I get negative 250. And why did I multiply? Because I had five times that amount of five different cards, and each card is worth negative 50. Now I could have lined it up if I wanted to and write negative 50, negative 50, negative 50 negative 50 and negative 50 and then add all of these up 5 10 15 20 25 and the rules for addition say when you're adding of the same sign just keep it the same add the numbers when you're multiplying over here you multiply the signs are different the answer is going to be negative so i still get a which would be my answer, negative 250. 
So let's press this. And there it is, negative 250. So that was a good problem. We want you to check your understanding. Watch the video again if you need to. And if you have questions, come see me in class. I'll be glad to go over them with you, and we'll talk about it. So we want to get you prepared for the New York State test. Here's a telephone number. If you need help with homework, dial a teacher, homework help hotline, 212-777-3380. Call them between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. So that's dial a teacher. The teachers will give you help not only in math, but any subject that you need help in. So 212-777-3380 between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Well, I hope you got something out of it. We'll see you next time on our next part of the series. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Robinson signing off. Bye-bye.